Sir, first of all, I would like to extend my gratitude to all the honorable members who have participated in this very important bill of Citizenship Amendment Bill 2015. And without going into the debate on the issues related to the question raised by some of the honorable members with regards to promulgation of the ordinance as well as the withdrawal of the earlier bill, which uh, Home Minister Rajdat Singhji has already clarified, I would like to highlight some of the few important points which are forming part of the provisions of this amendment bill. And uh, I won't be able to respond to all the queries of all the honorable members, which will take much time. So I will touch upon some of the basic points so that it can clarify as well as satisfy the apprehensions raised by some of the honorable members. First of all, Deputy, Deputy Speaker, sir, there are various process for equitation of Indian citizenship status. It can be by birth under Section 3 of the Citizenship Act, or it can be by descent under Section 4, registration under Section 5, and by naturalization under Section 6 of the Citizenship Act 1955. India do not have the provisions of dual citizenship. But most of the countries, all the honorable members are aware that most of the countries are moving towards the direction of providing dual citizenship status. But India has not gone to that direction yet. But as it has been made, mentioned here, that the contribution of the persons of Indian origins across the globe they have made tremendous contribution to the growth of this country. We cannot undermine that. And today, Indian diaspora is the second largest next to the Chinese in the whole world. And the remittance we receive from the, this diaspora is the, is the highest, as Honorable Member uh, Rana Dev has mentioned, that it's $70 billion if you see the records of last year. That you can imagine how much it means to the growth and well of this nation. And whenever we see the tricolor flying outside any part of the world, on any of the occasions, whether it's a cultural events, sports, whatever, we feel proud. And we can admit that we have not been fully justified in giving a proper status to every person of Indian origin living across more than 200 countries. This is a step towards giving and fulfilling the dreams which was set by Atal Vihari Vajpayee in 1999 that we will give all kind of status to the people having Indian origin and here I would like to mention that we may not be giving them a complete status of citizenship but it is very close to giving the citizenship status accepting they don't have the right of political they don't have rights to hold any official positions and they can acquire properties accepting large area of plantation ag agricultural uh, lands which some of the important matters raised here one was about the question of why we have discriminated against the Pakistanis and the Bangladeshis now this is an issue we are dealing separately I would like to inform the Honorable House that there's a special task force which has been constituted in September itself to deal with the large numbers of migrants, especially the minorities who come from Pakistan, Bangladesh. And for Sri Lanka, there's no discrimination one Honorable Member has raised that why the Indian origin in Sri Lanka we have been discriminated upon. There's no discrimination in the citizenship status. It is with regards to OCI card holder only. Sir, uh, regarding the main objective of this bill, I can divide it into two. The first is related to the equation of citizenship. The second is regarding the overseas citizen of India card holders. Now, under the 
Under the Citizenship Act 1955, there were some lacunas which have been found out, and we have tried to meet all those lacunas, all those shortcomings, whatever was there. But the points which, which were raised in this house by the honorable members is something which is not founded. Because we are not doing any kind of discrimination in the process of enacting this uh, amendment act. Number one, sir, I would like to mention about the, the process of registration. Now, we have, we have given a re relaxation in the provision, especially after a maximum of 30 days, which may be in different breaks. Now, this is a very glo globalized world. Anybody who stays for continuously seven years, and in the last one year, if the person has to travel to another country for any purpose, then he becomes disqualified. Now, we have relaxed that that we have given 30 days of exemption where he can make travel abroad and then he can still claim his application for the citizenship status. Now there is a process of naturalization. This naturalization process also, there is a relaxation for the period of another 12 months again. And some of the provisions we have we have mentioned in the amendment, I would like to inform the Honorable House to you, Honorable Deputy Speaker, sir, that we are making the provision so easy that those who are entitled to become the citizens, citizen of India will become. But some Honorable Members have raised about the question of discretion. This discretion is something we are not inserting new here. This disc discretion is already there in the provision. And in the old PIO also, this discretion was there. When a person of extraordinary character, where the country feels that he can be given sta uh, status of citizenship, waiving all the provisions, it was already there. And it is not that the government will just pick up anybody and grant special citizenship status bypassing all the provisions this is not the case so this was all the provisions available there we are just extending it to the merged provisions of the pio with oci so some of the uh, sections which were there which we are asserting new words is overseas citizen of india with the word cardholder there are various provisions. I'm sure honorable members must have gone through the provisions, so I would not like to read out the whole provision. It is quite uh, involving lots of sections. One section I would like to mention is that the merger of PIO with OCI was necessary because there were some of the provisions which, which were there in the PIO were not there included in OCI, and some of the provisions which were there in OCI were not part of the PIO. That is why we have merged it. Now it is known as Overseas Citizen of India card holder. Three differences I would like to point out. One was under PIO, it was up to great grandchildren. Now we have included great grandchildren. Under PIO, the foreigner spouse was allowed to apply for the OCI card. Now, under OCI, it was not eligible earlier. So now it has been made eligible. And the validity for 15 years has been made as lifelong. Sir, now beyond that point, I would like to make my speech very short by mentioning just two or three important points. Now, there is a process for acquisition of the citizenship as well as right for application for the OCI cardholder, and there is a provision for disqualification also. Now, any, any foreigner spouse, any foreigner who is married to an, an Indian who is an OCI cardholder, will cease to be OCI cardholder 
if the principal person is disqualified or he voluntarily renounces himself to be OCI card holder. And there are very enabling provisions also. So as I have stated, all the honorable members have raised various points. And we have taken note of all the points very carefully and we have very open-minded in to ensure that in implementing the whole provisions of this act, there will be no case of harassment, there will be no case of unnecessary putting trouble to all our brothers and sisters of Indian origin who are living across the globe. With that, I, I thank all the honorable members who have broadly supported the provisions in this amendment bill without any uh, making obstacles in passing the bill besides raising some of the clarifications which I believe with the intervention of the Home Minister and myself, I'm sure you must have satisfied. And once again, I thank the Honourable House for supporting this bill. Hereby, I seek your leave to ask the House to support in considering and passing this bill. No, no, I can't. Only yes. Thank you very much, Deputy Speaker, sir. The Honourable Home Minister has replied. I'm not going to to the details of his reply because yes, it is absolutely there was ample time so that the bill can be introduced in the house and get it passed during the winter session. Sir, I am only seeking on clarification from the Honourable Minister. That is a constitutional question which I have raised and that too for academic interest I would like to know from the government. Sir, the new amendment which is brought in is 2EE. I will read Overseas citizen of India cardholder means a person registered as an overseas citizen of India cardholder by the central government under section 7A. So overseas citizen of India cardholder is defined well defined in section 7A. Sir, going coming to section 7A. The central government may by subject to certain conditions, restrictions, so and so on. An overseas citizen of India cardholder is sorry, cardholder is any person of full age and capacity. Subclause 1, who is a citizen of another country but was a citizen of India. So overseas citizen of India card hold, card holder is a citizen of another country. By virtue of section 5, if the honor of the honor listen, if the if the, by virtue of section 5, such a card holder, OCI card holder can apply for registering as a citizen. So my sim humble question to the Honourable Minister is, please clarify the House because we are lawmaking whether dual citizenship is permitted. <laughs> to my information and knowledge, during the last UPA Times government, this was elaborately discussed in the Ministry. And even the overseas citizen of India is itself is a misnomer. Because as per the Constitution of India, if a person, according to Article 9, I think, according to Article yeah, according to what if, if a citizen acquires the citizenship of another foreign country, his citizenship lapses. That is the that is a mandatory provision in the article. Article, sir, uh, sir, Article Nine. Person voluntarily acquiring citizenship of a foreign state, not not to be the citizen. So my yes, clarification, which I seek, yes, sir, I, I clarification which I am seeking from the honourable right minister to. is, as per Section Five. An overseas citizen in, of India cardholder is entitled to get a citizenship. Overseas citizen of India is a citizen of another country. Whether dual citizenship is permitted, if that be the case, how the constitutionally that matter will be answered? This is the only specific clarification which I am seeking from the Honourable Minister. Honourable Minister. The uh, matter raised by the Honourable Member is very clear actually. There is no dual citizenship provision according to our law. Anybody who wants to acquire the Indian citizenship, first he has to renounce his status of citizenship of that another country. Anybody who is overseas citizen of India, cardholder, that is why we have inserted this cardholder close to status of being citizen, but not exactly full citizen. So if he has to acquire the citizenship process, we have laid down rules clearly in the Citizenship Act. He has to stay for seven, seven years, then the last 12 years, relaxation of 30 days. The provision is very detailed. So I'm sure the honorable member must be clear.